The more extra time you have, the better off you're going to be, especially if you're aiming for a really high score. Do me a favor and comment below. Do you run out of time on the English or the math or both? I would love to hear where you're at with your pacing. And if you don't run out of time, about how much time on average do you have at the end of the second module for both the English and the math? All right, last thing, guys. Before we get started, my tutor team and I designed an amazing digital SAT English workbook, which we're giving away for free right now for a very limited time. So if you want in on this, subscribe to our email list. I will go ahead and put the link up here to our website so that you can go get that workbook today. All right, my first tip for you to save time on the English modules is to paraphrase and annotate. I know what you're thinking. You might be thinking, but Laura, that takes me way more time. Let me push back on you on this. If you get to a paragraph and you read it really fast and you're like, I gotta get to the answer choices, there's a really good chance that you're going to totally lose track of the argument and what is going on. If you take a little bit of extra time to read a sentence and sum it up in your own words, take some notes, read the next sentence, sum it up in your own words and take some notes, what will happen is you'll have a deeper understanding of the paragraph, which will result in you getting the question right and not having to read it all over again for a second, a third, or even a fourth time. Hey guys, okay, so with scrap paper management for your annotations, here's something that you could do. And I will just say that using the blue book annotation feature in your scrap paper is just too much. I would do one or the other. And the blue book annotation feature is very limited. You can't actually doodle on it. All you can do is highlight and then type. So I would use your scrap paper for everything, all your math work and all of your English notations. So as you can see, I folded my paper in half a few times and I got these perfect squares. You can, if you want to save some time, because I know folding takes a little bit of time, you can just draw a line down the middle and then four lines going across if you're good at drawing straight lines, which I am not. Now I'm going to put my numbers up in the corner or I can just do it as I go. So when I get to the next number, I'll put it up in the corner. And that way I have one box designated for
Now that I have all of my notes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually make my own conclusion before I look at the answers. So um, I'm thinking to myself, okay, if they found something higher in silica, then that means it's going to support theory two, not theory one. So they probably don't believe that the rock collision created that all encompassing magma ocean. So then I'm gonna look at answer choices that would fit with that. And um, when I look at all of that, the answer is gonna be B because it's gonna go against theory one. The magma ocean formed from rocks colliding space was not all encompassing. It couldn't have been because there was also silica. All right, tip number two, you wanna to stick to the one minute rule. So for the English, honestly, you have about a minute and a half per question. For the grammar, the transitions, the words and context, they should take you about 30 seconds each. So you really want to designate two to three minutes for the time consuming reading questions. That being said, if you feel like you've run out of your limit, that's when you're going to want to flag the question and come back later. There is no sense of banging your head against a wall when you're stuck and you've spent so much time on something already. Give yourself an opportunity to get to other questions and pick up more points and you can always come back later. When you come back later, you're gonna see it with a fresh set of eyes and you'll notice something you didn't notice before, which will give you a way better chance of getting the question right. All right, tip number three, always make sure to read the question first when you hit the next button. If you don't read the question first, you're not gonna know what you need to look for. So please do not just go right to the text and start reading. Read the question before you get started. All right, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I don't know what you are waiting for. Smash that subscribe button and notification bell below. Students who subscribe to my channel statistically do much better on their upcoming SAT. So I can't wait to help you as well. All right, tip number four, you wanna make sure you read minimally on graph questions. They give you too much information on graph questions on purpose. So just make sure you're only reading the last sentence or two in the paragraph under the graph. That's all you need to be able to answer the question. Tip number five, jump to number 15 and start there on the English modules. Guys, there is no point in doing the hardest, most time consuming questions first. The math modules aren't designed that way. So why would we do that for the English? If you jump to number 15, you will start with the quick grammar questions, then the quick transition questions, then the quick note taking questions, and then you can loop back to number one and do the quick words and context questions, which will save the reading intensive questions for last. Tip number six, make sure you use the Desmos calculator heavily, especially for systems of equations questions. All right, guys, I know this isn't an English tip per se, but this is definitely a tip to save you time overall. And hands down, that is the number one math strategy for saving time. Tip number seven, you can cut corners on the function of underlying sentence questions most of the time. So when you get to one of these questions, just read the sentence that's underlined and then pick an answer. You only have to read more if the answer choices allude to different parts of the text, like the sentence before or the sentence after, but always start by trying to cut corners on the function of sentence questions. All right, tip number eight, my last tip and my most favorite is don't read the bullet points in the notes questions. You don't need those. So all you need to do is go to the question on those note taking questions and just pick what the student or the writer wants. All right, guys, if you want to learn more strategies and tips just like this, then sign up for our digital SAT self-paced courses. We have exclusive video content and lessons available for both the English modules and the math modules of the new digital SAT. And right now we're offering an awesome bundle option for you guys, where if you purchase both courses, you could save a hundred dollars. I will link up here to our courses so you can go check them out. All right, guys, that's it for now. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of this video for me. Go ahead and throw a clock emoji in the comments so I'll know you're one of those people that stuck it out with me to the very end. So until next time, good luck and happy prepping.